This reminder to join us a week from tonight. We have a great double bill featuring a couple of uh, excellent new bands, Space Hog and Ruth Ruth. Both of these bands have a couple of hit songs going pretty quickly up the charts right now. And next Monday night, we'll introduce you to them. Space Hog and Ruth Ruth, next Monday night, exclusively on Interactive Radio Rockline. My name is Steve Downs here in Hollywood. Alex Lifeson, lead guitarist for Rush at our Rockline affiliate Q107 in Toronto, Canada tonight. From his first solo album released just last week, entitled Victor, this is Don't Care. Victor, Alex Lifeson, there's a song, that's the uh, opening track from the album, as a matter of fact, and uh, lyrically, that's sort of cutting right to the chase, isn't it, Alex? <laughs> yeah, right he's to not, it. that guy's not feeling too good. Apparently not. <laughs> Don't he's care. He's a little peed off. Don't Care is the name of the track from uh, Victor. Let's talk to Andy now in Wichita, Kansas. He's listening to T95. Hi, Andy. Hi, my question is, how did you get hooked up with Edwin from I Mother Earth to play in Victor? Uh, I Mother Earth opened the last show that we did on the last tour, which was here in Toronto. And although I didn't get a chance to meet Victor last uh, that night, I met some of the other guys in the band. And um, when it came time to think about vocalists for, the, for Victor, um, I had to listen to uh, their CD and thought that, Edwin would really suit the material well. Um, he just has a certain quality and a menace in his voice that for songs like Don't Care, for example, or The Big Dance, I just thought he'd be perfect. I called him up and he said that uh, he'd love to give it a whirl and we got together and um, we've become quite good friends. And he, I think he's done just a fabulous job on it. I thought it was great. No question. Performances. And I, Mother Earth, uh, did I hear you say earlier that they have a new album coming out this uh, spring? Yeah, they're just finishing up now. Uh, they, they may, in fact, be done. And I think they're talking about a release in the next month or two hmm. uh, with a tour uh, following uh, beginning in, in uh, April. So look out for that. They'll be great. The, uh, I played on one of the songs on the record, um, and the material is really strong. It's going to be a really good album for them, I think. Looks forward to that. Uh, let's head to the Chicago area. Chris, listening to 103.9, The Wabbit in Chicago. He's in Grays Lake, Illinois. Chris, you're on with Alex. Hi, Alex. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Fine. What's your question, hey, Chris? Chris? I wasn't supposed to say how you doing, but oh well. Um, I actually got a request and a question. Uh, the request is, the song by Tour on the Snow Dog hasn't been played in about 50 tours. So could you maybe do it next time? And uh, yeah, we were holding up for the 51st. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my question is, um, the Auden poem, Victor, is obviously uh, pretty dark and disturbing. And uh, what got you interested in Victor, and why did you decide to put it to music? I was fiddling around with the, the music. I wanted to have something on the record that was a little different than uh, than the other songs. I really wanted to have some variety overall on the record. I thought it would be kind of cool to do a song where I didn't actually play guitar on and, and just did all the programming. Um, I thought also, once the, the music had been written, that it would be kind of fun to do a spoken word thing, a sort of a pseudo-beatnik kind of reading. And I opened a book that I have of his collected poems to Victor. And I read it through, and although Victor the poem is very, very long, I condensed it for the song, uh, it really cut the essence of what the record was about, dealing with the dark side of love and how it can um, push you to do things that are pretty horrific. So uh, it seemed to suit the record quite well. And not only, and I want to make sure I'm correct on this, Alex, but not only is the album named Victor... Uh, but the project, and uh, indeed the people you're working with collectively, uh, are also being called Victor. Am I right about that? That's right. I didn't want to call it the Alex Lifeson Project or the Big Shut, Big Deal Project. <laughs> I mean, these everybody that worked on the record was so into it, and it, you know, and I just felt that it would be fairer to, to have everyone involved as more of a band right. project right. And, and to, you know, salute them for it. Let's talk to Tom now in Springfield, Ohio, listening to 104.7 WTUE in Dayton this evening. Hey, Tom. Hey, Alex. I'm happy to be able to talk with you tonight. Thanks. I have two questions for you. Um, first, <laughs> uh, let me say I think the record's absolutely brilliant. Um, but I think only the first three songs, there's a hint of your work with Rush, and the, the balance of the record seems to lean toward a more modern rock or more mo alternative side of rock. I was wondering if there was ever any discussion about uh, marketing the album to other traditional, other than traditional rock stations? 
Um, no, we never really talked about that, and I never really thought about that. When I set out to do the record, I just wanted to... I really wanted to wing it. Whatever I felt that day, instinctively, is what I kind of followed up on. Um, so there was no game plan for it. As far as I was concerned, once I finished the record... You know, it was done, and if no one heard it, that's okay. I, at least I did it. Um, all of that stuff comes later, and it's usually in somebody else's hands yeah. that's uh, better a, suited for that sort of thing. Really a myriad of styles on this record. Uh, they, they, I mean, you cover a lot of ground here. There's a lot of different places to go. Uh, Amanda in Hillshore, New Hampshire, listening to 100.3 WHEB in Portsmouth tonight. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Alex. Hi, um, Amanda. I have two questions. First, I was wondering, what kind of feedback have you gotten from Getty and Neil on this album? Uh, they were both very, very positive and very supportive. They, I don't think, wanted to get involved in it in the early stages of it while I was writing and recording. I mean, they always asked how things were going, but I think... Uh, they they wanted to basically stay fairly neutral on it and didn't want to you know um, affect at all what I was doing. After I finished, they were the first two people that I gave copies to, of course. And the feedback that I've gotten back from them has been very positive and very supportive, and I love them for that. Uh, uh, Alex is uh, at Q107 in Toronto tonight, near his own uh, hometown. There, Stan is in Branton, Ontario, this evening. Stan, you're on Rockline. Hey, Alex, Happy New Year. Hey, you same to you, Stan. Um, I was wondering if uh, stuff you'll do in the studio with Rush will bring you new and maybe a different style of playing because of the solo album? Well, for me personally, I, I think that my level of playing is uh, quite high right now just because I've been working on this project for so much of last year and I t had two weeks off and then started this uh, new Rush record, so... Um, I'm feeling like I'm in really good shape playing-wise. And the fact that we had a year and a half off and we all did other things. I mean, Getty made this beautiful baby girl. Uh, everybody came into the project feeling so good. We had, I think, the best time that we've ever had writing the material for the new Rush record. And we started recording it this past week. Uh, and I think it's going to be great. I really have high hopes for this one. It just feels so good. Uh, we'll be looking forward to that. Here is the yep. uh, title track from 1991's Roll the Bones from Rush on Rockline. Title track to a, uh, another platinum seller from Rush. That is Roll the Bones. Alex Lifeson, our guest for the full 90 minutes. We'll be hearing more of his record, Victor, coming up here in just a few minutes. Send us a postcard now if you'd like a chance to win one of our brand new 1996 Rockline AT&T calendars. Just saw them today. They look real nice. You can have one hanging on your wall. And the one that you get will be signed by the guests that appear on the show during the month of January. To be eligible, put your name, address, and the station you're listening to right now on a postcard, mail it to 1996 Rockline Calendar, P.O. Box 4383, Hollywood, California, 90078. The 96 Rockline Calendars are brought to you, as always, by AT&T. Back live with Alex Lifeson on Rockline. And this reminder, everybody who gets on the air with Alex tonight will receive a copy of Victor, courtesy of Atlantic Records, and a select few callers will be randomly chosen to receive a VCR Plus Instant Programmer so you can enjoy Rockline and your favorite TV show at the same time. Very easy to use. Just punch in the plus code numbers from your TV listings and you're ready to go with Rockline and VCR Plus so you don't miss a thing. Back to the phones now for Alex Lifeson Robert in Lewing, Louisiana. Listening to 92.3 WCKW in New Orleans this evening. Robert, say hello to Alex Lifeson. Hello, Alex. How you doing? Good, Robert. And you? Uh, yes, I'm doing just fine. Uh, okay. Good weather down here today. Uh, Not so up I have, here. <laughs> I have a couple of quick questions. Uh, years ago, you worked with uh, Rick Emmett on a project, uh, Beyond Borders. Uh, right. Was uh, that kind of the uh, impetus for this project? Did you want to work more as a solo uh, artist? No. Not really. That didn't have anything to do with it. I've worked on a couple of projects here and there uh, whenever I've had the opportunity, and I enjoy doing that very much. But no, specifically that project had nothing to do with this. Rick Emmett, of course, the uh, driving force behind Triumph for uh, many, many years. Kevin in Virginia Beach, Virginia, listening to FM 99 WNOR in Norfolk, Virginia this evening. Hi, Kevin. Hello. Hey, Alex. How you doing? Great. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you and the other guys from Rush for inspiring me to pick up the bass 15 years ago and I think you're the most underrated guitarist I've ever heard 
Um, what I'd like to ask you was, uh, have you thought about recording with the old Gibsons and high watts you used to use? Uh, actually, I've I've got a high watt that I picked up for recording on this album that we're working on now, as well as my stacks after stacks of Marshalls, and I'm using the Gibsons quite a bit in the studio, but uh, I do like using the Paul Reed Smith guitars live and also in the studio, so I, I have a whole pile of stuff that I go through. <laughs> got quite a setup there in your own uh, in your own home there, I understand, too, quite a studio there in the, in the, uh, in the homestead there, right? Yeah, we had a lot of fun. We we managed to knock off pictures off the wall and, uh, and other things that were sitting on a desk out there. And that became a contest after a while. Can we turn it up loud enough to knock things over? Vibrated right to the floor there. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk to uh, Ed now in Madison, Wisconsin this evening, listening to 101.5 WIBA-FM. Ed, you're on with Alex. Hi, Alex. Love your work. Hi, Ed. A uh, very you. strong album. Uh, and uh, as I'm listening along to it, I see your sense of humor cropping up and uh, shut up, shutting up. I'm just wondering what yeah. possessed okay. you to put that on the album. I got a kick out of it. Well, the album was developing to quite a dark uh, record, and I just wanted to inject a little bit of levity in it. So I got my wife, Charlene, and uh, her best friend, Esther, uh, who's a real character, <laughs> in to do this um, little bit of nagging about... <laughs> The uh, funny little habits that some of us have, and the and the and the silly little things that we argue about that end up becoming big things in the overall picture. And um, we had them in there for about seven hours, going through so many different things, and they were well lubricated with a couple balls of wine. <laughs> and by the end of it, of course, we couldn't get them to shut up. Of they, course, right. they just didn't. St- what well, we supposed to got our, on a roll? And by the way, let yeah. me tell you, you know. So we had a lot of fun with that one. Yeah, though. it sounded like Charlene might have been having a little too much fun there towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Charlene's a straight girl. It's Esther that really takes over. Oh, there. is that right? That was a great. But that's Esther. You got right, you, Michael. <laughs> you got to hear that uh, track on the on the Victor record. Let's talk to uh, Jerry in Jacksonville, Florida, listening to Rock 105 tonight. Hi, Jerry. How you doing? It's a pleasure to be talking to Big Al Dexter of the Orbit Room. <laughs> now you got it. <laughs> uh, I have one question for you, Alex. Uh, your son, Adrian, uh, co-wrote the music and did the program for At the End and the Big Dance. Uh, my question would be, could we possibly see a uh, CD from him in the future? I sure hope so. He's written some stuff that is that just blows my mind. I mean, he's got a handle on creating moods and colors with music that is uh, overwhelming. He's 18 years old. He's going to be 19 in March. And I think... Uh, that he has a future in music, and I know that's what he wants to do, and I support him and stand by him 100%. Is he a player as well? Does he play an instrument? He's been playing guitar for four years. Uh, he's very good, even though I don't get a chance to hear him much. He's very secretive about his playing, but I sneak around the house and <laughs> catch him when he's practicing, and he's a, he's a good player, but he's a really good songwriter, and he's developing those skills right now, and I think that perhaps in a couple of years, I might actually hear something from him. Great skill to have. Good question there, Jerry. Thanks for the call. Let's see if you uh, if you can guess who's singing lead vocals on this track. This is from Victor on Rockline, the first solo record from Alex Lifeson. The song is called Start Today from 